Hello and good morning and welcome to Talking Your Walk. And this morning I have the wonderful Suzanne Horribin with me. Now, Suzanne is very well known in the, the, the mid Wales. Absolutely fantastic therapist and teacher as well. She's been doing this a long, long time. And, you know, she, she's a hypnotherapist, she's a healer, she's a meditation leader. Uh, she's got such a lot of skills. And so it'd be really great to hear her story and how she got to what she's doing now. So good morning, Suzanne, and how are you? Hi, good morning, June. I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking me to do this interview. I'm really excited. <laughs> so mad because I can't wait to see, <laughs> hear how you got to, 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 to Newtown. So where were you born and where were you sort of brought up? I was born in Liverpool. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, in a place called West Derby. I always used to say that we live, we were at the posh end. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was... I was born in Liverpool, but I moved away when I was little. But all my family are from Liverpool. They were all very, um, I grew up around spirit because um, my parents, my father was psychic. My grandmother was, um, back in the day, she was a tea leaf reader. And people used to go to her house to have the tea leaves read. I suppose like they do when they go and see a medium these days and she used to do people's tea leaves and so I've always grown up around um, knowing about energy and spirit so it seemed quite sort of normal to me really. Oh tea leaves I mean it's been a long time since I've heard that but a good tea leaf reader was amazing you know and I know it's a, a sort of, not many people do it now, but, you know, uh, that must have been fabulous to have that around you as a child. So what kind of child were you? Were you quite quiet or were you a bit of an extrovert? Or, you know, how did you sort of react with the world when you were young? I think I was quite a nervous, shy child. Um, but... I was always, we were well brought up, so we had to watch our P's and Q's and um, we had to speak properly, so my parents would never let me shorten anything, so I'd go shopping, but I wouldn't go shopping, and so I was always sort of brought up that way of um, being polite, being kind, but I was quite a nervy shy child really and you know when you went to school you said you moved away from from Liverpool when you were young where did you move to well the family moved to North Wales so I grew up um, in North Wales in a little place called Ganway um, which is in between Landidno and Conway and um, basically my parents went there when they were, well, they had their honeymoon there, but my mum, during the war, was evacuated there, so she knew it well. So they wanted to bring us kids up anywhere but in Liverpool. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> awful. But they moved to um, Ganway, and that's where I went to school. Um, and yeah, school was, primary school was, was okay. I had a small group of friends. And there was, there was one thing that um, probably affected me more so out of school than in school. And that was when um, I had my hair cut short, because I've got a birthmark on my neck. When I had my hair cut short, people started to see it. So I always had glances or people looking. Now the school, the primary school was okay. Little kids, you know, they just accept, don't they? And, you know, you, you get on and they'd ask what it was and I'd tell them. Um, but I think when I had my hair cut short and I moved to the bigger school, that's when I started having a lot of people saying, you know, oh, what's that on your neck? Because, oh, it looks like a hickey and <laughs> all this sort of stuff, you know? And it made me perhaps even more ner nervous and shy. 
So I used to, I started growing my hair and I used to hide, hide it. But the worst people were the adults, not the children. So I had a sort of period of time where I wouldn't really look at people because if I did, I would sort of be showing this part of me. And um, I started to sort of hide away a little bit because of the comments that I was getting as I was then in high school and getting older. And like I say, the adults were the worst, especially bus drivers. Um, I'd get onto a bus and the bus driver would say, oh, you know, you must be a right one for your age. And that sort of hickey or birth, um, sorry, love bite on your neck. So I became quite sort of shy, really, and kept looking down and not looking up. Um, I remember one day, a bus driver actually said um, out loud, and the whole bus went quiet, oh, who stuck an iron on your neck? And I just sort of walked up the bus, and everyone was like turning around looking at me, and I was sort of trying to hide it. Um, so that wasn't particularly good, but I became strong, quite strong through it. I would imagine that you would have to, I mean, and that's a, a, an awful way for adults to behave and, and probably not even realising the emotional distress that that causes someone. Um, so, so at school, what sort of subjects did you like? Or did you know like? I was very much into, um, I wasn't brilliant in school. I got on okay, but I wasn't brilliant. Um, mostly I liked all the arts craft what i did like was um i think it's geology where you look at stones and stuff like that so i was fascinated with that and how the land was and how the planet and different stones i mean even now i have stones all around the house that have little names and <laughs> so i've always liked that sort of subject and then the art and the craft wow so so when you left secondary school what did you do did you stay in the area or did you go on to study or go out and get a job or what happened then when you sort yeah, of left? I, I we we stayed there um i did all my sort of growing up and went to the school in Landidno. um when i left school i went into hairdressing salon um and at the time it was when you trained with them it was for five years and you had an indenture that you signed so i took out this five-year contract and i trained in the salon and i stayed there for 10 years so grew up there and uh, literally you know went through all the emotions and training and as a teenager and and getting bigger um, but my family, my, my father became ill because he had a perforated ulcer and um, the operation went wrong. So after that, he was unable to work. So he became quite ill and there tended to be a lot of arguments in the house. Um, my mum and dad, there was no fisticuffs, but they argued um, to bring the roof down <laughs> with the arguments and um, I used to be the one that calmed the situation and I was always known as the peacemaker and the one that tried to calm them down when they started but even the, today I can't stand people arguing um, and if I feel an argument building up I, I, I can feel it inside and I start on oh, and I try and calm them down um, and then it, it, we just sort of went through some tough times because my dad could no longer work he was quite poorly and then in the end we became homeless so with that all the family had to go off and we were quite lucky because believe it or not our neighbours took us in they knew that as a family we'd all homeless and lost our, ho our house 
So me and my mum lived in one neighbour, my sister lived with another, my brother, he lived with a neighbour down the road, and the neighbours took us in, which was, was really nice. I mean, eventually, my mum and dad got back on their feet again, um, but I was always aware of sort of arguments and having that build up of something so that sort of also made me the person that I was um, and I, used, I carried that through I think into the hairdressing salon because people would come and even when I was training they would ask um, the, the boss at the time would I could, could it be me that washes their hair because they enjoyed the way I massaged the head and the way I spoke to them and they said that I was like calming and so they always asked for me to to be the one that was sort of doing all the massaging and before it got to you know the seat where they had the hair cut and yeah. Well, that's wonderful um, because that's one of the, the, the great things about getting your hair done isn't it I mean is, is how they wash your hair and that little head massage and um, mm. it's one of the things that a lot of people really enjoy when they go for a, a haircut. I know it's certainly something that I, I, I really enjoy. So you're, you're working in the salon. When did you get into holistic um, therapies? How did that happen? Uh, a sort of what, because I've always been interested in it. Like I said, my parents were very much into it and I was always, um, I had uh, books on astrology and my dad was like very much into the tarot and so it was always there and I used to go to a lot of mind, body and spirit fairs and um, I met my husband, my first husband, while I was working in the salon and he hated mind, body and spirit fairs and he didn't like me going to them at all um, and he used to say you're messing with the dark side at those places. <laughs> so he hated it. Um, but I used to sneak out. I used to go and, and just go to them, you know. So I was always fascinated from a young age. Then, you know, in the salon, I used to go, used to hear about things like that. Everyone used to talk. The girls in the salon used to say, so I'd be, oh, going but I couldn't say anything to him um, because he didn't like it and at the time now I look back and I see that he 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 suffers with depression um, and I think he used to because he used to if I did something like going to a mind body and spirit fair or something that he didn't really like he would send me to Coventry and he wouldn't speak to me um, and this this could go on for six weeks where we wouldn't speak and I'd try you know I'd cook and I'd clean I'd do all the, the bits that you do in the house but outside the home I'd be talking to people but once I got inside that house um, there was no conversation. I didn't speak till the next day when I went out and were able to see other people. So I kept a lot of things quiet because I didn't want to, and this happened quite regular. So um, whatever it is I, I did upset him. Um, and he used to say, be careful because you know what I can do. And what he could do was live and not speak to me and literally send me to Coventry. So I'd gone from living in a home with parents that argued and a lot of noise and trying to calm it all down. I moved to a home where there was no talking, no conversation. I mean, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't like that all the time, but it was he, when he dipped into sort of like a depression, um, I mean, we eventually split up. Eventually, I, I took the kids and I, I, and I left. Um, Where did you go when you left? 
Um, who, well, my sister took me in and then I was lucky enough for my two sisters and my brother to all chip together and put a deposit down for a flat. And I moved into a flat in Landidno and I stayed there. I stayed there a while and um, I had the kids by now. So I've got three children. And so I have little part time jobs and I just lived in the flat and the kids saw their dad every so often and what have you. And actually now we're probably better friends than what we were when we were together. Sometimes that's what happens, isn't yeah. it? Sometimes just the responsibility with being together can just be a wee bit too much. So, yeah. so you've stayed in Landudno and you brought your, your children up. So what took you to Wales? Well, my brother lived in Newtown and um, he got in touch with me one day and said, if you want to start a new life or have new beginnings, I've got this house here and he used to rent the house out to students and they used to wreck it and he used to have to keep doing it up in between the students. So he said, if you want a fresh start, I've got this house, you can have it. So I sort of jumped at the chance and by now I'd met um, my second husband that I'm with now. Um, and I thought, well, yeah, you know, a fresh start, a new place. So I didn't really think too much about it. I was just, yeah, I'll be over there at the weekend. And I just, without really having a lot of thought, I just moved here. Wow. And, you know, but coming from North Wales into to, to, to Newtown, although they're still part of Wales, they can be quite different as well. So how did you... Um, Get into, did you get into hairdressing when you I arrived in, in, in Newtown or did you start your complimentary therapy journey then? Or No, I started doing a little bit of hairdressing. Um, but to be honest, because I'd done 10 years in a salon, then I was three years mobile after that because I by then had the kids. I was sick of hair. <laughs> Even the family, you know, they, they sort of, they have to wait to have a haircut because I just became tired of doing it. And um, so I got little jobs and I tended to work in theatres. I worked in theatres in Colwyn Bay, Lampidno and the one in Newtown. So I did a lot of work in the theatres. And then... Did you work? When you what, say work in theatres? We what? did. Oh, it was everything from just showing people to their seats, to serving the ice cream, to working behind the bar. It, it was sort of front of house. Uh, yeah. And, um, and then I got a job in the call centre that was in Newtown uh, for Great Universal. So I worked there a few years and then we got made redundant. And then as part of a redundant package, the Welsh Assembly Government would pay, it were, I think it was over £2,000 for you to um, go and retrain in something that, you know, you wanted. So I applied for the package, got the full amount, and then I started doing different training. I, I first went to Bishop's Castle, and it was quite weird, actually, because I was standing in the main street in Bishop's Castle. And at the time, they used to have the awareness shop. And um, I was stood there, and next minute, everything around me seemed to go into slow motion. It's really odd. And then I was just standing there looking, and I felt like I was sort of still, and everything was moving slowly. Then just like that, it all went to like real time. It was odd. And I turned around and I just walked into this shop because I was like in, <laughs> in a bit of a daze, like what, what the hell was that? So I walked into the shop and um, it was the awareness shop and they had crystals and doing different courses and I saw Reiki. So I first learned Reiki with a lady called Anne Postings and she now 
well, uh, she moved to the New Forest. I don't know if she's still there now. Um, so I started my sort of Reiki journey with her. And then from there, I went on to learn other stuff. When she moved away, I obviously, I met you. Um, and I started bringing in other things. I started doing massage because I knew um, that there would be a certain amount of healing, well, probably a lot of healing that comes through with the massage. So I incorporated that to reach the people that didn't quite get the whole energy thing. They were more, you know, of the hands-on, touchy-feely people. So I brought in the massage. Um, I then went to um, a mind, body and spirit fair in Welshpool. And um, there I met a, a high priest and a high priestess and they were doing workshops and I thought oh this looks interesting I'll do a workshop with them went to the workshop did a six week workshop with with them and then decided to sorry what was that on Wicca Wicca <laughs> yeah yeah That's so nice. I I started training to be an initiate with this high priest and high priestess um, and yeah I, I sort of learned quite a lot of stuff with them because I'd already now been doing a lot of circles a lot of healing circles which I started in um, Bishop's Castle and then sort of development circles so I was already going into these different circles uh, learning more stuff, doing lots of reading, having done the Reiki, bringing in other things. Um, and then when I met um, Russell and Julie, their names, they after they moved to Spain, Russell's since passed away, but I started doing a lot of training with them, learning about energies, the chakra system, earth energies. And of course, because in school, I was fascinated with the earth and the stones and geology um, just love that whole energy connection uh, so started learning a lot of stuff around um, magical healing um, just that whole thing that it encompasses um, as part of a sort of craft or magical group um, like I say that eventually folded. I was with them for a few years and that eventually folded and all the time I was learning different things. Um, I learned Sacum with Mags O'Brien um, and just bringing different things into what I do and building it up slowly. After um, a few years I decided to do whole meditation, the mindfulness, um, I'd already been in a lot of circles and having done it um, with uh, this group that I was in, I thought, well, I'm going to learn it for myself. So I did the meditation first, then the mindfulness, and then I went on to do um, hypnotherapy, just to sort of bring it in um, to what I was already doing, just to sort of add more strings to my bow really not to be doing sort of this therapy that therapy it was just to accumulate everything to bring in the knowledge to um, a treatment or a class that I might have been holding I think after a while um, I met another <laughs> they, they just seemed to pop up but I met another high priest and high priestess um, the first group that I was in was um, a Gardnerian tradition and then after a few years and life was going on I met um, another couple and they were Alexandrian so two different traditions and I decided to join them and um, once again I became an initiate they were more temple based so we did a lot of sort of ritual magical healing that sort of stuff um, and I was a few years with them, but something kept saying, you know, you need to move, this isn't the place for you, you need to move on. 
Um, and that I always had this thing inside my head, and not that I'm a guru, but I kept having these words saying, um, instead of looking at these people, be your own guru, it's all inside. And I thought when I did stuff on my own, um, it worked better because I was more relaxed, because I, I still was and probably am to a certain extent that nervous, shy person. So in group settings, I always sort of pulled back a little bit, but on my own, I sort of came out and I did all the stuff, you know, and it seemed to, it, it was like working. And I would just open up to the universe and say, right, if you want me to do this, more of this stuff, bring it to me. But at the time I had um, a part-time job, so I would be working part-time, do my therapies and what have you in the afternoon. And then one day I was in my workplace and we had to wear a, um, a cap, a cap. And then somebody said to me, it's about time you took that cap off, isn't it? And I went, you sure? Right, yeah. <laughs> and I turned around, there was nobody there. And I sort of looked around, but I heard it as if somebody had just put their head over my shoulder and said, it's about time you took that cap off. So I went home and I said to my husband, Right, we were going on holiday at the time. And I said, right, when we come back from holiday, I'm not going back to work. I'm gonna do my stuff full time. And I'm just gonna open that door, take a leap of faith off the cliff and see where it took me. And then as soon as I did, doors started opening and people were getting in touch or I was being invited to different places. And then um, a good friend of mine, she um, run weekend activities. She's got her own place, a lovely place up in the hills. And she approached me and said, do you fancy running a weekend retreat? And I said, well, what do you want me to do? And she said, well, if you, if you run it, if, you're, if you do, all the stuff and then maybe we'll sort of bring other people in so I said yeah go on I'll give it a go because I told the universe bring it to me I thought if I shut the door on the universe now what's that saying so I thought yeah you know I'm gonna give this a go so I wrote out a whole weekend retreat where I started with the relaxation meditation telling them about energy, the chakra system, healing, self-healing, and brought in other people. So I brought in people doing the crystals, the sound, um, the, the uh, Tai Chi, Alan, who does Tai Chi, and brought those people in and did a whole, from the Friday to the Sunday, weekend retreat. And um, we were running it for five years before my friend um, sadly retired <laughs> so running it for five years and two three times a year and then well, I think we had a waiting list of people for for all of the dates we had a waiting list so that went on um, and yeah it's it was great like I say she's retired now so I've done other things since I've done a carer's retreat. Um, <clears throat> I did one last year. I, went, well, I just did a talk and also did treatments um, on one of um, Kate Magic, the lady that does all the raw food. I, I did a talk on one of her retreats that uh, Luke and Leah held at their place and um, done a few workshops. So, yeah, it, it's, you know, once I opened up and I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm going to look inside and do it sort of my way instead of looking all these other people. Um, I've since, I've brought other stuff. I did access bars with Ben Holder and so I, I brought all, all that in as well and did some short courses um, with Emmett and kinesiology with Maria Franklin. So I sort of 
done those as well and just slowly bringing things in I suppose that um because everyone's different because that you know one thing doesn't fit all does it so people that come to me with different needs I feel at least I can draw on different uh, modalities or different uh, way of thinking to help that person I think that's wonderful and this all started you know really in, in a way I mean I know you were doing it from when you were a child but this is about you know the, the government giving you a grant and people who at the moment may be concerned about their future or lost their job that might be you know worthwhile them approaching a local enterprise hub or a local growth hub or something like that to ask them if there's any funding for them or a local college maybe there's some funding for them as well so you're doing all this now and you're doing you know i know that we've got covid in the go and 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 you know things are put in hold but you went and did your certificate for covid didn't you didn't yeah. you yeah yeah, yeah i've just done that yeah. trying to get organized and ready for when they say in wales because obviously yeah. i live in wales that we can start back and so yeah hopefully fingers crossed i'm trying to get everything in place get the stuff that i need um to hopefully i know it'll be a bit different um like i say there is going to have to be that time space in between where you know people aren't bumping into each other and the cleaning for cleaning after that everything like that so it's going to be more spaced out i think it's going to be different but i guess everyone is having to get used to a different way of life so you know you have to go with the flow and and see how it goes and um when you get back into doing what you do if people wanted to contact you suzanne do you have a, a website a facebook page how do people contact you i'm on facebook so my business page on facebook is calming moments um i think because i've always known as the one that was trying to calm everything down <laughs> so that's sort of come into the name today so it's calming moments brackets holistic therapies and that's on facebook um i've got a website but i'm just well i'm nearly finished it actually i've been that's one of the one of the many things i've been doing loads on the lockdown um but one of the things i've been doing is building a website and that is www.calmingmomentsholistictherapies and then also so on Instagram, I'm on um, many ways to well-being. Okay. So, so your website, um, www.calmingmomentsholistictherapies, is that .co.uk? Oh, it's, um, it's .com. .com. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll find it. And then when I put this video up, I'll put the links to yourself as well. Okay. Um, what a journey you've been on. And that you've been that's an amazing journey, it really is. And uh I've just got to say thank you so much for for joining me for a chat and let me know. It's absolutely fascinating to I never knew you did everything that you've did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. You've just been absorbing all this knowledge and and, and um working with some great people as well, you know, and as you say, important that you stand in your own self because you've yeah. got a knowledge and, and, and as you say, be your own guru. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I think, yeah. you know, and I also helping people to believe that in themselves, you know, and to find their own guru inside. Um, you it's, can always go and look out for a little while until you feel confident confident enough, confident enough to 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 stand in your own power really yeah. for sure. oh that's wonderful well thank you so much suzanne and um i hope to see you soon after this lockdown yeah you're very welcome thank you for asking oh you're welcome no thank you take i've enjoyed care. our chat take care thank you. bye